In this video, you'll learn how to use and control a relay module with a ESP32 or ESP266. A relay is an electrically operated switch that allows you to safely control high voltages with lower voltages, like the 3.3 volts provided by the ESP GPIOs. There are relay modules with 1, 2, 4, 8 or more channels. The number of channels determines the number of outputs you're able to control. The relay module has a high voltage side for the mains voltage connections and a low voltage side for the control pins. On the high voltage side, you have sockets with three connectors, common, normally closed and normally open. The current you want to control goes to the common socket and then you can choose to get the output on the normally closed or normally open connectors. In the normally closed configuration, these pins are connected by default, meaning the current is flowing unless you send a signal from the ESP to the relay module to open the circuit and stop the current flow. In the normally open configuration, there's no connection between these pins, so there's no current flow unless you send a signal from the ESP to trigger the relay. On the other side of the relay module, you have VCC and ground to power up the module and input pins to control the relays. If your relay module only has one channel, you'll have just one input pin. If you have eight channels, you'll have eight input pins, and so on. The signal you send to the input pins determines whether the relay is active or not. The relay is triggered when the input pin goes below about two volts. This means that you'll have the following scenarios. In a normally open configuration, you should send a low signal to activate the relay and have the current flowing. In a normally closed configuration, it works the other way around. In many relay modules, there's an extra set of pins. These pins allow you to choose if you want to power the relay electromagnet using an external power supply or use the same power supply you provide through the VCC pin, in this case, the ESP power pin. With a jumper cap on, these pins are connected. That means the relay electromagnet is directly powered from the ESP power pin. So the relay and your board are not physically isolated from each other. Without a jumper cap, you need to provide an independent power source to power up the relay's electromagnet through this pin. That configuration physically isolates the relays from your board with the module's built-in optocoupler. Now let's control a relay module with a ESP32 or ESP266 using an Arduino sketch. In this example we're dealing with mains voltage. Misuse can result in serious injuries. If you are not familiar with mains voltage, ask someone who is to help you out. While programming the ESP or wiring your circuit, make sure everything is disconnected from mains voltage. The code to control a relay with a ESP32 or ESP266 is as simple as controlling an LED or any other output. In this example, we're using the normally open configuration. We need to send a low signal to let the current flow and a high signal to stop the current flow. If you're using a normally closed configuration, you send signals the other way around. After uploading the code, wire your circuit as shown in this schematic diagram if you're using an ESP32 or follow this one if you're using an ESP266. Then, you'll see our lamp turning on when you send a low signal and turning off when you send a high signal. To control a relay module remotely, you can use any web server example that controls outputs. We've created a code that builds a web server example that allows you to control as many relays as you want whether they are configured as normally open or as normally closed. You just need to modify a few lines of code. This example requires that you have these libraries installed. You can find the complete code and instructions in the companion blog post. Just click the first link in the video description. In this example, set this variable to true for a normally open configuration or set it to false for a normally closed. Define the number of relay channels you want to control in this variable. For demonstration purposes, we're setting it to 5. 
In this array variable, you can define the ESP32 or ESP8266 GPIOs that will control each of the relay channels. We recommend taking a look at our ESP32 or ESP8266 GPIO guides to learn which pins are better to use to control relays. Finally, insert your network credentials in these variables. Upload the code to your board, open the serial monitor, press the reset button, and you should get your board IP address. Follow one of these schematic diagrams to wire the relay module to your board. Copy the IP address to your browser, and you should get the web server with as many buttons as the number of relays you've defined in your code. Now, you can control your relays remotely with your smartphone using this example. For a final project, make sure you place your relay module and ESP inside an enclosure to avoid any AC pins exposed. We hope you find this video useful. For the complete tutorial, visit randomnerdtutorials.com. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.